guys, I'm Sam Crack, and I've been trying to master an at-home paint job for a little while now. I've had a few successes, but I always have one major issue, and that is bugs. On my Corvette Grand Sport bumper, a love bug embedded itself deep in the clear coat, ruining the whole thing. I had to refinish the entire bumper two or three times over. On my Focus RS, a few gnats decided to have a party right in the base coat. I haven't even got to refinishing that. It's pretty clear to me I'm missing one big part of the puzzle, and that is a clean room. When you go to a body shop, they paint in a spray booth. So I bought my very own spray booth. And it's right here in this box that says Made in China. Let's see if it's any good. This is an inflatable spray booth. If anybody knows what that says right there in Chinese, let me know. We got a lot of unpacking to do. Let's get this thing unraveled, rolled out, and see how it works. So this entire thing rolled out of that sack right there. It's massive. Just to show you how big it is, I'm about six foot one, and this is how much space I take up just laying on it. I think we got this thing oriented right. You could see there's clear plastic parts. That's so like you could see through into it, but there's two ends. You're supposed to be able to drive an entire car in this thing. We're gonna find out whether that's possible or not. And then at the end, right over here, we've got the two air inlets. We're gonna put two blower motors right here and it's gonna blow air into this thing, inflating it and also circulating air inside. So I'm assuming you don't die while you're painting a car. Adjusted. It's huge. I can't believe how big it is, but I don't have any stakes in the ground and I don't want it flying away So I'm gonna do right now here. Let's check this out How am I supposed to even get <laughs> There it is All right, our paint booth is set up. It's secured. I ran out to the store Got a couple of these tent stakes, like if you're going camping, these are about 75 cents a piece. Got one in every single corner, and now the thing isn't moving too much, even though we've got a cross breeze. The wind is blowing this way right now. I wanna take you for a quick tour of this thing, and I know you're wondering, what do you mean a quick tour? It's just a big, empty, inflatable room. Well, no, there's actually some really cool stuff going on here that makes it unique. Now, obviously, we got these big air chambers all around that give the booth its structure, but remember, there's two blowers on the outside there. One is for fresh air in the booth so that you're able to breathe, so that there's ventilation. That's really important when you're painting. And these things right here, you can see there's four of them. There's one right here, one right there, and then two over there. These are actually a filtration system. So you can see this Velcro, you peel it off, there's a filter behind that filtering out all the bugs, all the dust, all the debris that could be entering in here. Obviously, we've got this placed outside. Stuff that would ruin your paint job. It's got a complete filtration system and ventilation system. How cool is that? Now, behind those two filters over there is actually a segregated room. Here, let me take you on the outside and show you. In between the two filters, there's actually a zipper to allow access in and out of the main room here. And then you've got this little segregated room 
right here. You can also access it from the back side. There's a zipper right there, but I'm gonna go right back here because it's kind of loud with the blowers running. This is where you're gonna keep your paint system or your tools necessary to paint whatever you're painting. So if you got a compressor, you go, you wheel it in right here. If you've got what we've got, a turbine-based paint system, you put it in right there. You run your air lines and your power in right here, and then everything stays right here. Again, that way, so you have less things in the room with you when you're painting so things don't get dirty and contaminated. Of course, we've already talked about the sheer size of it, but look at it up next to the barn. It's almost as tall as the barn it's huge and i like these windows on the side lets you see in if you're inside lets you see out just kind of nice it lets that natural light in while you're painting talking about light if you wanted some added lights people like to have a room lit up when they're painting so they can see what they're doing you've got all sorts of hooks on the inside to hang whether it's just a light or something else you got hooks on all four corners there Being that this is one of the smallest cars on the market today, this is a good gauge to show you how much room you actually have. Now I parked it further over on the passenger side, but say that you wanted to paint a side of the car, you'd have plenty of room. There's a good, I don't know, three feet, four feet from the doors to the wall of the paint booth. And now if you parked it in the middle, you could get a good three feet probably on each side. The rear, Right here is where you'd end up zipping the booth up. So you got several feet behind you and we've got several feet in front of us. It's obvious that people will be working on cars a bit larger than this. I've got a compact SUV. Let's drive that in here and see how much room we've got. Our Lincoln SUV is much more representative of pretty much the average car. A lot of people are driving mid-sized SUVs, small SUVs, and we can see there's still a good amount of room really on all sides. We have a couple feet up here. We definitely have about three feet here. We've got another three feet here. I mean, check out the roof. If you had to do some paint work or body work on the roof, you're gonna have plenty of room to set up a little ladder in here and spray there's still a ton of room in this thing. So even though it looks novelty, it seems really functional. As I said earlier, we're gonna be using a turbine-based paint system. That is this small little box right here. Yes, no big compressor. All you do is plug it in to 110. You flip the on switch right here. You've got an air hose that comes out here, connects to your hose and spray gun, that's it. No moisture filters, no pressure regulators, just the box the size of a toaster, and we're gonna be spraying base and clear using this system. paint on the front bumper it was cold outside I was using the wrong reducer and I messed things up quite a bit I went and scuffed it all down flat you can see the problem area is right in here but this should just require maybe one or two more layers of base coat and it'll be finished ready for clear I brought in the rear bumper as well now which has been completely primered scuffed so right now I want to try and nail down our base coat This is one of the drawbacks 
of a blow up spray booth. It's unpredictable. So what happened just now is that it must have been too much electricity for both fan motors and our turbine system to be running and it cut the power to it. I went, I reset the breaker. I swapped the power cord on the turbine unit to another breaker. So we should be good. Let's resume our painting and we're lucky that we caught that in time. That could have been an absolute disaster. <laughs> Base coat laid down really nice, smooth and even on our rear bumper. The color is spot on. And now we just have to wait a few minutes before we're able to spray our clear coat on it. Now when I started spraying the front bumper, especially in the troubled area, it was clear I didn't put enough prep work into it. There were a few runs and I didn't sand them down well enough. You could see them through the base coat that I was spraying. And if we went and sprayed clear over this, it would just basically highlight it. So I'm gonna put this off to the side, wait for it to dry and get it prepped the right way next time. Now I'm gonna take you through that process and a lot of things I learned while painting these bumpers in an upcoming video. Check this out, there is my bumper. It is freshly clear coated, can't see it really well through these windows here, but I'm going to let this sit with the booth zipped up for probably a couple hours before I move it outside and put the booth down. It looks pretty good. I finally did a decent job. Now, I'm sure there's a few of you out there wondering, how much did I spend on this thing? That's a great question. I was inspired to buy one of these inflatable spray booths when I saw some similar inflatable booths on Amazon that were ranging between like five and $700, but they weren't as nearly as big as this one is. It'd be tough to fit an entire car in one. And so I went and started searching around and found a bounce house manufacturer that would build me one a custom size. So this one, you should be able to fit a Ford F-150 in it and I paid a thousand dollars just for the booth alone. The two blowers were about a hundred dollars a piece. They range anywhere from like 80 to 150 dollars. So total I'm in it around 1300 dollars. Yeah it's not extremely cheap but it is extremely effective and it is substantially cheaper than building an actual spray booth but it does come with a handful of drawbacks. The only other drawback I could tell you about this thing is that it is big and it is very bulky. As you can see, it's still not completely deflated after sitting probably about 30, 45 minutes after I shut the fan motors off. And putting this thing away is kind of a nightmare. I'm already dizzy and tired, but it's going to take me a little while longer to wrestle with this thing. So do me a favor out there. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a like. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, go right here. Click the link in the description box below where I post pictures of things like the inflatable spray booth before they go live on YouTube. Guys, I want to thank you very much for watching.